Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending and welcome. I'm Scott, a Chief Architect, and we're here today to talk about bathroom cabinets and vanities, as well as some wall dimensions. As we are live today, I would encourage you to ask questions. You can do this during the presentation, as well as following presentation, you can raise your hand and we'll unmute your mic and you can ask your questions. You'll find these settings in the GoToWebinar control panel. Today's session is recorded. We'll be sending that out tomorrow along with some survey questions and we'd appreciate your feedback. You may notice my occasional assistant today, Maya. If you were on the session last week and you heard a bunch of barking, she wants to make it clear that she was not the one doing that. And that's why I'm actually in a new office set up this week. Also on the meeting today, we have some chief architect staff. They'll be keeping an eye on me as well as answering your questions that come in. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me switch things around here. And I'm gonna share my screen. So let me just switch around here just a little bit. Make sure I've got my screen share on. I'm going to cover how cabinets work in Chief Architect. Then I'm going to create these two custom vanities to show various cabinet tools. And then I'll cover how to create clean wall elevation dimensions per the National Kitchen and Bath Association's guidelines for your baths. You can complete these same steps using our Chief Challenge plan. You can download this plan from our user forum, Chief Talk. I would encourage you to follow these steps to help in your learning and then you can post your results using the Chief Challenge hashtag on social media. Let's get started. I'll begin the seminar by taking a look at how cabinets work in Chief Architect. Then I'll move on and show you how to create this particular powder room vanity. From the 3D view you can see the cabinet that I placed on the right. You can easily modify this cabinet by coming over to the catalog library browser that I have open on the right hand side. You can come down to various manufacturers you can download from our 3D library. You can click on the door style or the drawer style and simply click and replace that object right directly out of the library. You can also scroll down, find your favorite surface manufacturer. In this case, if I come down to Cambria, we open up their catalogs and we find a particular color that we like. You can grab that surface material and spray it on the cabinet. So it's very easy to make any visual changes to the cabinet. Then if you want to make changes structurally to the cabinet, you can click on the cabinet. Our cabinets are designed to bump and resize in three inch increments. You're gonna notice that when I did that, it snapped in three inch increments. It changed the door because it was set up to be an automatic door at 26 inches. That became a double door. And when you double click and open up the cabinet, you can completely customize this cabinet down to the 16th of an inch. You'll find the sizing information, countertop information, backsplash, toe kick, and then box construction. Chief Architect cabinets can either be custom or manufacture. What makes those custom and manufacture is the type of box construction. You can choose between framed or frameless. And then you can also control the drawer and drawer overlay and then specify how much the overlay reveal is as well as the inset. You're gonna find panels on the left-hand side of the dialog. From here, you can easily click on the front of the cabinet and make changes. For example, if I wanna switch this out to a drawer face item, I could select the face item type, come down to the list of face items, choose that it's a drawer. You can split these face items either horizontally or vertically to create a variety of different styles of cabinets. There are different components for the doors and drawers. You can change those directly out of the library. I prefer to do it in a 3D approach that I did previously. There are accessories, moldings that would be for the shoe or an edge profile. You can control the layer, the fill style materials, and several other items inside of the cabinet dialog. To learn more about how the details of cabinets work, we have a specific video available on the website that will walk you through all of the basics of cabinets. To create this vanity that's on the left-hand side of the screen, the first thing I want to do is I want to get it sized appropriately. Let's go ahead and stretch this out to be 39 inches in width. And then for the height, let's pull that down to 30 inches. And then I'm going to double click on this and make some modifications. And let's just do that from the plan view where it's a little bit easier. I've already pasted a diagram to show the cabinet. 
and I want to set the depth of this to be 21 inches and a few other things no back overhang I want a custom drain molding glass shelf and I want some 8 inch legs let's just close our library browser so we get a little extra space in making these changes I'm gonna double click on this in the floor plan view and let's just kind of walk through making these changes we already changed the width and the height on the depth I'm gonna go ahead and set this to be 21 inches as we come down the countertop thickness one and a half inches the overhang notice that I have an indicator here for the back that there is no overhang for the back of this cabinet I'm gonna uncheck the uniform and then for the back side of this let's go ahead and put a zero in in this preview panel you can actually take a look and rotate around zoom in using the wheel on your mouse and you can see that that overhang on the back is now removed for that particular cabinet so this preview gives you the ability to make all of these changes towards the bottom of the cabinet you're going to notice that there are eight inch legs legs are controlled on the height through the toe kick so if those legs are eight inches I'm going to change that toe kick to be eight inches and then when we get the accessory panel we'll go ahead and select that taper toe and it will replace the toe kick when we put that in now you may notice the toe kick is difficult to see in this case because we have three drawers in here let's take a look at the front of this cabinet remove the drawer fronts by clicking on these and we'll replace these by openings and in this case let's go ahead and take this first drawer I'm going to change it from a drawer to an opening and for the remaining face items I'm simply going to click on them and I'm going to press the delete key for the drawers and now you can see that toe kick at 8 inches is down below and we just have one big opening with a single shelf you can always click on these openings and then control the shelves by coming down to the specify and then you can specify exactly what you want for the shelves now the next thing I want to do is move over to the accessory panel I want to come down where the feet are let's browse out to the library I'm going to come over to our core catalog down to architectural millwork you'll see the catalog for cabinet feet is available I'm going to grab the taper you can always use the name of this and search it if you know the names of those and in this case you can see that that 8 inch taper has replaced the toe kick you can always retain the toe kick there's an option in the dialog to retain toe kick now the next thing I want to do is I want to slide these feet in slightly you're gonna find an offset a negative value will move it in and maybe just a couple of inches on the front we'll set it back and now we have those feet kind of positioned where we want to for the cabinet let's go ahead and close the dialog and then let's move back over into our 3d view and take a look I'm going to take some of the materials off of the completed vanity and apply them onto our vanity that we're building. I'm going to do this with the eyedropper tool that we call the material eyedropper. Let's begin with the countertop. I'm going to select the glass material on the completed one. I'm going to apply that onto the top of the cabinet and I'm also going to do that for the shelf. Apply that onto that. You can apply these in scoping if you want to change the interior of the box, the exterior of the box. You'll find these scoping tools for the material painter, component, object, which be the entire cabinet, and then there's room, floor, and plan modes, and then a stain mode as well. I'm now going to place the sink, the faucet. If you look at this, I have a custom drain that I've also created, so that shows up in this 3D view. And let's go through the steps of doing that from our floor plan view. Now, the first step is to open up the library catalog. If you know the product name, in this case, the Reeve Kohler sink, you can use that in search mechanism. You can come over, you can find that, and let's just zoom in and place that on top of the cabinet. When that places, what you can do press your space bar to be in selection mode you may need to click and then press your tab key to get that particular element and then you can slide it around you can also hold down your control key to override bumping and snapping for the faucet I'm looking for a Brizio faucet again I know the part number of that I'm gonna go ahead and use the search and I'll click and place the faucet a little more difficult since I don't have a wall but once you click and place it let's just kind of place it off to the center here and then a lot of times I'll press the equal key to turn on my crosshairs and then I can center that exactly where I have that sink Now you're gonna notice right now I have a label and it's kinda of stepping on the sink 
if this is a furniture item, let's go ahead and click on this. Let's pull the label out. You'll notice that in the completed variation of this, I've called it the FURN Furniture Sink Base 39 unit. How do you do that? You can open up the cabinet by double clicking and then on the label panel, you can come over here, you can specify the label. In this case, if we type in FURN Sink Base and a lot of times what I like to do is put a macro in here. There's macro option here that you can use, object specific. And if I come down and I choose the width macro, you'll see that it comes in with the label down here in the bottom. And that's how I get that custom label to display. The other thing is we might just take a elevation view and let's set the height for the faucet. Let's take our elevation view. And you can see my completed faucet is quite a bit lower. Let's go ahead and pull that down. We'll use our crosshairs to align it. You can always double click on these objects on the general panel. You'll find a height setting in here for floor to top. If I put in exactly 40 inches, you can be very precise in putting those dimensions in to position those items. Now for the drain, you can see it over in the completed model. I'm going to actually take a back clip cross section through the center of that cabinet and generate the view so we can draw this in CAD and then we'll convert that CAD shape to the 3D molding pie line. So we need to go back into the floor plan view. I'm going to use this camera tool underneath the orthographic view tools and it's called the back clip cross section camera. And all I'm going to do is take a small slice right through the cabinet and I'm going to end it towards the sink. In this section view, I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just kind of approximately draw where I think this drain should come in. So we'll come down, come over, come up and come over to where we think the wall will be. Now in this bottom section, I'm going to take this area that is the red highlight and I'm going to use the convert line to arc. You'll find a little diamond if we zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to pull this down. There's also a make tangent tool. If you want to make that tangent, it will make it nice and smooth. Now I have the general shape for the drain itself. When you select on this line, you're going to find a tool in the bottom edit menu called convert polyline. And what I'm looking to do is convert this to a 3D molding polyline and then go in and change the profile of it. You can see the profile right now is using this square profile. Let's replace that profile with something that's round. So let's just go in here and type in round. We'll find a profile that is circular and then let's go ahead and make sure that the width and the height is also set. That looks pretty good. You can do any final adjustments if you want to pull that down and then also using the material eyedropper, I might pick up the material off of the faucet and apply that onto the drain. Let's jump back over into our existing 3D camera view and you can see that that drain is off center a little bit. So we need to square that up and center it on the drain hole from the sink. That's going to be easiest to do from the floor plan view. You can see that drain represented by the dashed line in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a marquee around that and I'm just going to pull that over until it's centered right on top of that drain. We'll move back over in the 3D view and take a look at it and it looks like we have that position pretty well. Now the final thing that you can do, you can add accessories in here as I've done in the completed one. You can add this into your library. You can block it and then reuse it for future projects. Easiest way to do that is from your floor plan view. If we move back over into the floor plan view, I can draw a marquee right around that cabinet and all of the components. Make sure all your layers are turned on when you do this. While it's selected, I'm going to come down. There's a tool down here called Make Architectural Block. Once that item is blocked, you have two options. You can add this into the library. Let's go ahead and do that. Add it into the library. You can see a preview of it. I like to rename it from untitled to something more meaningful. The other thing you can do with this object is add to library as. It's a tool right next to add to library. With this tool, it will allow you to individually select the items that you want. So you can kind of control which elements you want to add. And I'm just going to kind of select everything down here all the way down. And then there is the option to create objects in a subfolder. Let's take a look at what this does. So over in the library, 
if you look at this untitled, let's just give it a name that a little bit more meaningful, the webinar vanity. As you expand this catalog out, you can see that here are the different components we had added to the cabinet earlier placed in the video, the door and drawer. Well, those really aren't being displayed, but they're part of the cabinet. The interior fixtures, the hardware that's being used. Of course, there's the hardware for the doors and drawers are removed. And then the materials that may be used for the cabinet, the base cabinet itself, and then the taper. This is a nice option if you want to be able to capture all those components that you want out of the library. And then again, if you click on the cabinet that we added previously, you have the cabinet itself and you can always place those directly out. So that's how you can create this custom powder room vanity. As I move on and create the second vanity for the seminar, I have a photograph of this vanity that I took from a parade of homes. And I've marked it up. You can see that I want to create a cabinet that's similar to this photograph. On the right hand side, I want to create some openings, a couple of drawers, a thick countertop, and then on the wireframe variation, I want to create an integrated slope sink. So let's go through the steps in creating this. I have a couple of these cabinets down at the bottom. And let's begin by placing a base cabinet down here. And let's take a view of this. Now a few structural changes in this 3D view. Let's go ahead and stretch this out to be, let's say, 60 inches. And then we'll take the height of this down to 34 inches. And you'll notice that I can't do it in that snapping. So let's just double click, open up the cabinet. Let's come into the general panel and let's just very specifically set the height of it to be 34 inches. The depth will set it to be 21 inches. And then for the front of this cabinet, you can see over in the completed variation, we've got really kind of three banks of face items, a couple of drawers and then the openings. What I want to do in getting ready to create this is let's begin with the countertop. You'll notice that the countertop is actually six inches. So let's go ahead and put in six inches in this case. We'll leave the overhang as uniform. And then for the toe kick, let's go ahead and set the toe kick. Again, that's going to reserve space for the legs. And I'm going to set that at six inches. In the preview panel, let's just go ahead and click on the bottom set of double drawers. And I'm going to change that face item from the item drop down to be a drawer. Now you're going to notice that we have two drawers. If you move up to the vertical layout parent, there's an equalize and that will equally space out those two face items. While that is still selected, the vertical layout parent, I'm going to split that vertically so I get two sets of face items. Notice over here in the detail of the face items, we get a lot of more information. I'm going to come down to the vertical layout. You can see the shading over here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to split vertically. Then I'm going to move back up to the top and use that equalize so that we can equalize everything on the front of that horizontal layout. Now the last thing I need to do for that face item is come over to the drawers and change those to openings. So we'll just come down here, make that an opening, and then we'll just do the same thing on that, make that an opening. And for the most part, I have the face items configured. The next thing I need to look at are the feet down in here. So let's go over to the accessories. Let's come down to the feet. And then on the library panel, I've actually created one of the columns in the program as a foot. I'm going to choose that directly out of my personal library. It will match that. Again, you can kind of zoom in, take a look at it. And then I'm going to go in here and again change the offset. You might try in three inches. A negative number moves it in. And we'll do the same thing for the depth offset for that setting. And for the most part, that completes the changes for that cabinet. You can see that it's pretty similar to the one that we have. In this case, you can go out, we can grab a sink and a faucet and place those as I did earlier. What I want to do in this case is I'm going to bypass that step and I want to create, if we just slide our 3D view over, I want to create a scenario that looks like this with the integrated countertop. And you can see how that kind of slices in. Now the best way to do that is to draw that shape in a section view and then we'll do a subtraction using the tool. So let's go back into the floor plan view. And I'm going to take our back clip cross section camera. Let's just kind of create a clip section right through that new cabinet that we drew. 
and using the line tool, just our CAD line tool, I'm going to come in here, zoom in just a little bit, and I'm not going to be too exact about this, but I'm going to create a shape that might be something that looks like what an integrated sink would look like. And let's just kind of connect the dots here, and you can see that shape. When you click on this, let's go down into the bottom edit menu, again convert to polyline, and the option that I want this time is the polyline solid. When you convert it, the program is going to ask you how thick that is. You can think about this as being how wide is the sink. I'm just going to put in 21 inches. From this point, I need to go back in to the plan view and center that object in the middle of the countertop. So let's go into our plan view. Let's make sure that we center it. You can see where it drew it out to the side. You can simply click on this, use the center tool, centered on the cabinet and assuming if that's positioned right we can now go into the 3D view and to make this subtraction I actually need to take the cabinet countertop and the polyline solid make them both the same style of solid and then I can do a subtraction and let's just do that from the 3D view let's come over to where we have this new object and the first thing I need to do is make the countertop a custom countertop. Then I'm going to change it to a solid and then we'll do the subtraction. So step one, let's click on the cabinet and you're going to find a tool down here that says generate a custom countertop. That will basically subtract the countertop off of the cabinet. We'll preserve all the overhang so it's a pretty quick way to do that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is let's go in and make some modifications to that. Let's just make sure that, let's explicitly make sure that it's six inches and the height is at 34 inches, those look good. And then on the cabinet itself, when we subtract that off and I convert this to a solid, it's probably a wise thing to just remove the countertop at six inches. That's gonna change the height because cabinets in Chief Architect include the height. So I'm just gonna come up and you can do a little math in here, minus six inches, press the tab key and that will reset that cabinet height to 28 inches. You won't really see anything happen other than I now have a custom countertop and I have a custom object in here. These need to be the same type of solid. Let's take a look with the countertop. Let's come down and convert that. And the tools down here is convert to a solid. And the only reason I have to do this is I need to have two like objects so I can do the subtraction. Let's do the same thing for the shape that we created. Let's come down. It looks slightly different. We'll hit the solid tools. Make sure that that's also a solid. And now I can easily click on the countertop, come in, and you're going to find a couple of the tools. One of them is subtraction tool. There's a merge tool and there's an intersection tool that you'll find down here in the bottom. But I want the subtraction tool. I'm going to click on the subtraction and now you can see that we've created that subtraction in there and then all I'll do is just borrow the faucet from the other counter cabinet and we'll just slide that over, copy of it approximately where we want and again we'll probably have to fix that in the 2D view to make that exactly where we want and I'll just use a center tool, center it and now I've got that completed. You can block this, add it to your library by using the block command and then there is the add to library. You'll see that down here. You see the preview of it. In the final section for this webinar, let's take a look at creating a wall elevation and how you can best dimension this. I'm going to do it for the most part around the National Kitchen and Bath Association's dimensioning guidelines. I'm going to begin by using the tool underneath the orthographic view and it's called wall elevation. You'll see this over on the left hand section of my screen. I'm going to come down into this small room that I've created for the seminar. I'm just going to click and drag right through the wall to generate this wall elevation. Maybe zoom out just a little bit. This isolates it to a single room when you use this tool. Then I'm going to use this automatic dimension tool specifically for placing the NKBA automatic dimensions. Typically this will place the dimensions and does a pretty good job at it. You may want to customize the dimensions. For example, if I turn on my crosshairs, I typically like to bring my center lines up toward the fixtures. I turned on my crosshairs so I can use this as an alignment. And then I'll just position those two center lines exactly into those fixtures. 
And then on the right hand side of the elevation, sometimes I'll remove detailed dimensions. I'm just going to click on the dimension string. And I'm going to pull it off of the soffit just a little ways, pull it off of the upper portion of the soffit. And then if you want to have even less detail in here, remove the toe kick and the cabinet. You can now see that you have a run of 34 inches to your cabinet with the balance going up to the ceiling. I still have the detail off on the left hand side. Now in this example, I am missing the dimension for the mirror fixtures. And I'm going to create a dimension in here. Let's just use our dimension and click and drag through here and see what happens. You're going to notice that it doesn't pick it up. And in this case, what I want to do is create a dimension for those mirrors. You can always click on the diamond, maybe pull it over to the mirror. In this case, pull it over and then we could slide that dimension up and position it into place. What I like to do in this case is maybe have a custom dimension default that doesn't require me to do quite as much work as clicking on and adding these dimensions in here like that. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a real quick custom dimension default that will dimension to these furniture items. It happens to be these mirrors that I used are furniture items. So let me delete that dimension string that I created. And let's take a look under our active edit view. Currently you're going to notice that our dimension default is the kitchen and bath dimensions. Let's go ahead and make a copy of this. And I'm just going to call it kitchen and bath. I'm just going to call it furniture for a second dimension that I can use. At this point, I'm going to come over to the locate objects panel that opens up and I'm going to remove everything with the exception of furniture. And I'm going to go to the sides of the furniture. Everything is turned off. Wall surfaces is enabled and furniture is selected. I'm going to accept the layer, the arrow, and all the other defaults that came with that kitchen and bath dimension default. We'll also make sure that this is our active default. Let's slide down just a little bit. Let's just verify under the edit active tools. Our current dimension default is using that new furniture dimension. And now when I use this dimension tool, let's just click and drag right through here. It generates that dimension for me. A lot less work. And then I'll position it up pull it into place, maybe grab that upper dimension, pull it into place, and there I've completed my dimensioning. And then as far as maybe some annotations, I'll look at using the text tool with the leader line, come in here, and we'll just call this out as a soffit, and any other dimensioning annotations you want to make. Also in the library, if you search for reflection lines, then I'll grab the CAD block, and I'll place one on each of the mirrors. And that pretty much wraps up creating a nice clean wall elevation using the automatic NKBA dimension tool, manually adjusting it. I created a custom dimension default that I dimensioned to the furniture mirrors. If you save that dimension default in your template plan, you will then have access to that dimension for all future plans. To practice these steps in the video, we have posted a chief challenge file. You can repeat these steps, recreate the vanities and the wall dimension, and then post your results on social media using the hashtag chief challenge. And with that, next week we will be doing showers and talking about how to dimension and design and use tiles. That's next Thursday, same time. I'm going to get ready to turn it over to Carrie, and she's going to curate your questions. And as we're getting ready to do that and take your questions live, we'll start off with relevant questions and then also make sure that you unmute your microphone as Carrie calls on you. You have to take an action just to unclick your microphone. And um, Carrie, I'll turn it over to you and see if we have uh, questions out there. We do have some questions. We have Ruth Lees. Hi, Ruth. Go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Um, how, I'm trying to add a full height leg to every, each corner of a vanity. Okay. And so I had used pieces from the millwork catalog and then um, made it an architectural block and added it to the library. And I wasn't sure the best way to attach it to the vanity cabinet, so I tried um, the feet and the pilaster 
to list her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good enough. But it didn't uh, recognize one of the legs that I had saved. I wasn't sure if there was a certain way to save it. Um, I think I had it as as mill work. Okay, sure. So if you take a look at my uh, completed design here, mm -hmm. and I mentioned earlier that I didn't find a cabinet foot that um, worked for me, and, and, and I created a, a foot out of a column. It sounds like maybe that's similar to what you're trying to do, and you want to then assign it to the cabinet. Right, um, but I also want it to be like from just below the countertop to the floor. So you want it all the way from the countertop to the floor? Yes. Okay. So you might have to place that individually if okay. we just took, uh, let's just open up a brand new plan here. And let me go in and let's place a cabinet and then let's grab a column. See if that works. So this thing's going to be pretty giant. So that's probably an eight foot column, right? And then mm -hmm. we have this cabinet. And if we kind of disconnect the countertop, we slide this over. And let's assume we want this leg to be underneath of and next to the to the cabinet. Mm -hmm. See if this this helps answer your question. Let me just switch that over so that we see everything here. Mm, there we go. Okay, so I've got this gigantic <laughs> column, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And we want to we want to figure out how to resize it. Well, you can click on this and then resize it. And make sure you retain the aspect ratio because we want to maybe keep the wider base and the narrower top. And let's assume that the height of this cabinet is 34.5 inches, assuming that was what the top of my cabinet is below the countertop. Right? Okay. And I'm just going to slide that over next to the cabinet. Of course, that's probably not exactly your style, but is, is that what you're kind of is that what you're trying to do? Sort of, um, but it's like attached to the base cabinet portion. Um, so okay. like for one specific is an inset cabinet. So have mm -hmm. the styles like extended, um, you know, an extra, however big the leg is. Right. And then trying to put that on there. Okay. And it just, it just, seemed like there could be a better way because I, I basically like did manually place it but it was hard to get all of them like even and lined up um, mm. sounds like a pretty custom configuration um, <laughs> yeah. right. and, and sometimes what I do is I might use I don't know if I can place that in this view because I don't have a wall sometimes what I do is I'll use just another cabinet or a cabinet filler Okay. So if I place a base filler next to this, and then let's just grab this guy so that he is not exposed on the end, okay? And then maybe no toe kick. Let's get rid of that toe kick. And then we'll pull him back just a little bit, just okay. for the purpose, purpose of this. Let's oh, see. okay. And... Again, I'm just kind of messing around here a little bit. And let's resize that just a bit. We'll leave it off for the uh, width. Let's just make it six by six. There we go. That should be close. Okay. Again, this <laughs> probably isn't exactly what you're looking for. Uh, that, that's a lot easier doing the separate filler that makes a lot of sense because then you can put one behind it in the back corner too you could yeah you could just okay. take that and resize it and then copy reflect if that works okay you try something else yeah um put in a base cabinet and close the toe there's a setting for closed toes on the base cabinet 
Okay. Let's grab our cabinet tool and you're saying do a closed toe. Mm -hmm. So let's come down, close the toe. All right. Now put the pallet, now put a polyester on. Just put it, okay. put, put accessories. Put something in. And there's a checkbox underneath pilasters that it says extend the bottom. And let's click that. Extend the bottom. Is that what you're talking about, Al? Yep. Okay, let's see what you've done. What do you think, Ruth? That's yeah, that's nice. Um, I, I, like, I like the way you did. I think the second way would be good for just a like maybe a half leg, mm -hmm. like a turned leg. Um, so both are are good ways to do it. Better than what I was doing. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully you found that. A little bit. Yeah, that helpful. was very helpful. All right. Thanks, Thank Ruth. Thank you. Scott, we had Elliot write in and he was wondering if you could demonstrate how to add towels and accessories to the inside of your vanity. To the inside of a vanity. Okay, well, let's assume that this is a great looking vanity and we want to put something inside of it. So maybe. Um, Let's look for some roll towels and see what we find. And I'm going to probably do this in the plan view so that it's easier to place this. So let's just kind of place that. And then I'm going to slide it inside the cabinet slightly, maybe not all the way, because I may need to grab that and it's easier to do it outside. And then in the elevation view, of course, you may need to slide that around, put it around, then remove the shelf out of that cabinet. And then we go back into the 3D view. And hopefully that is something similar to what was asked for. Let's just make sure that we click on that and then we'll pop the shelves out because that would be a little odd. And there we go. Thanks, Scott. We have a question from Rosie Philens. Hi, Rosie, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, hi, Scott. Hi, Rosie. Um, how, um, I've been doing some custom vanities um, with drawers right underneath the sink. So I need to show the mill worker, you know, I have a U-shaped um, drawer box that would go around the trap, the sink mm -hmm. trap. So mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if you have a, a quick way of, of doing that, like showing the drawers cut into a U shape. And I guess that would be in a plan view. You'd want to see that U shape. Yeah. Yeah, so in this case, if we were to look at, let's see if I still have that elevation view open. If you look at this, right, Mm -hmm. um that probably doesn't work as a real drawer if it's a real drawer and if you've got a custom drawer that looks like that what i might do let's just place another cabinet in this plan as a as an example and then let's turn on so we see the drawer box so here's the drawer box right you can see it's fully mm -hmm. open yeah um and, and it's using the dashed line. Maybe what you could do, since it won't look any different from the elevation view or a 3D view, is that right? It looked um, like just one solid drawer in the front. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I so, so I think what you could do, let's just let's just turn that back off, um, so we don't see that. I think I would do that maybe in an elevation or in a plan view and draw your drawer in here. Again, this is just a CAD object. Okay. And then if it's a U shape, let's just take that CAD object and I'm going to use the break tool and I'm just going to put a break in here. Oh, yeah. 
and pull it down. And then if you look at the, the dashed line style that the box is using, probably to change the line style to be dashed so that it's showing up underneath. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you can do your call out or a, you know, a, a, just a marker in here that says, you know, you shape drawer. Box, yeah. Yeah, whatever it is, right? Yeah, sounds good. Is that, is that, does that yeah. cut it for you? So that's the polyline. Yeah, I just used a, what the tool specifically was here is I just used a box tool, drew a box. Oh yeah, box and then, yeah. and then Break. the bank tool, box tool, okay. Yeah. And are is there any way of showing dovetail drawer boxes? Um, so if you wanna show that level of detail, probably what I would do is I'd find a DWG or DXF file of somebody that's already drawn it or from okay. the, from the um, from the millwork company that's going to build it for you and then i just do an elevation view and do a call out and then have that specifically on your page i don't know if i have a call out like that on here but i'd probably just do the call out on there and say here's the detail for the draw drawer, drawer construction yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that's okay um and i bet i bet if you post it on chief talk if you don't have it somebody probably has that detail they can yeah. share it with you very good. Thanks, yeah. Scott. Thank you. you. Bet. Thanks, Rosie. Mm -hmm. Scott, we have a question from Ken Hurd. Hi, Ken. Go ahead and ask your question. Oh, Scott, I'll try to ask a relevant question today. Perfect. On the, could you just review on that drain pipe again how you made that line into a poly, hmm, a poly line sure. solve? Yeah, sure. So let's just go in here and. It's a different plan, but let's take a section view. So here's a section, right? Mm -hmm. And what I did is I used the line tool. Right. Again, this is just an arbitrary figure. Once you have it, I'd curve the bottom of it. And then the line is still selected in the lower edit menu as the option to convert to the polyline. Do you see that, Ken? Yes. And then when you convert that, the 3D molding polyline is the option you want. It will then come in with uh, the molding profile. Probably, yeah, I think the default's typically a square. I replaced mine with round, and that's what I did to create that drain pipe does that work uh i yes uh, i'll tell you what i struggled with this week was i was trying to do something similar um but i couldn't do it freeform like that um and uh -huh. i'm not sure why but i ended up having to draw something to which i could i was trying to do and irons for a fireplace oh uh huh sure it, same sort of thing um, right it was three dimensions it wasn't just um you know one it was several polylines joined to make the end iron but bye. Mm -hmm. well as long as it works for you i've used that line tool for downspouts uh where they come down off of the eaves and maybe they shift around different elements of the house so it's a, a handy tool that you can then yeah. sign and molding and it will follow that line shape great thank you you bet thanks ken scott we have a question from andrea rogers hi andrea go ahead and ask your question hi there how are you hey andrea hi um i have a question and it's not cabinet related it's basically in your shower um when i'm drawing an interior wall Mm -hmm. And I've put all my components in the room, the shower, the toilet room. How do I change the materials in each section? So I have a shower, then outside okay. the shower. So if, if I change the the um, the wall in the shower, you know, to have a, a granite background, it'll change the entire ex, you know interior wall. Okay. So how do I make different materials pop up in different sections? in my bathroom. 
Okay. By the way, make sure you join us next week because we're focusing on showers next week. Yes. So <laughs> you've got a situation where you have materials in the shower and you only want to change one of the elements. Correct. Okay. So make sure when, you, when you're doing this, the material painter is set up to be in a scoping mode. Okay. And scoping just means is it an individual element or an entire object, which might mean the entire room. And if we just go in here and let's come down to our library browser, let's clear this out and find a tile that may be a little bit different. Um, where are we at here? We have a lot of stuff open. Let's come down, find some materials. And let's assume that I've got this good looking material, assuming that's good looking to those that <laughs> like that. And I want to change it for just one segment. Is that what you're trying to do? Correct. Okay. And then and then of course outside, you know, outside of the shower as well, because the entire, you know, so changing it on independent sections in a room or within a shower. Okay. So, well, how, so, so basically, how did you how did you get the wood material on the wall, the same wall that the shower tile is on? Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look. So this area here is a shower. Correct. This area here is the rest of the bathroom, Correct. and I have what's called room definition that allows me to easily assign materials to different rooms. So okay. if I take this material here, let's use this material, and I spray it on, let's grab it, uh, where was it? Okay, there we go. And I spray it on, make sure first of all I'm in component mode. Okay. So these component modes are down in the bottom. So this is component, object, room, floor plan. So those kind of control what we call the scoping. So if I click on this in component mode, it's going to just change that particular material. And if I click on it in this mode, right, it's gonna change just that segment. Okay. Now, if I wanna go back and say, oh, well, I want that to be wood, so let's just pick it up off the side over here. Mm -hmm. And let's change the scoping mode to floor, right? Now when I click, when I'm in floor mode, because this is just one floor, right? When I click, what would happen? It's gonna replace it in both rooms, both the shower room and in the main bathroom because my scoping mode is in the floor mode. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes. And again, it's, it's being in that component mode that gives you that fine control over which segment you're gonna apply it on to. Okay. Does that work, Andrea? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. You're going to show up next week for the showers? I am. I am already <laughs> reserved. Perfect. Okay. Thanks a lot for calling in. Scott, we have a question from Martin. Hi, Martin. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. Hi, Scott. Uh, I have a question about the cabinets. Now, you uh, show four legs on the cabinets. What if I want to hang the cabinets on the wall and just want to show the, just want to have two front legs, not the back legs? Okay, well, let's pick on this cabinet over here in the corner. Let's assume that you don't want the legs and you want to hang it on the, hang it on the wall. No, I want to, I want the legs, but I just want the legs in the front, not the back ones. Okay, so you don't want back legs. Right. Okay, so in that case, I think what I'm gonna have to do, I'm not positive, but I think what I have to do in that case is I can only assign these legs to all four corners, okay? In the in, inside of the dialogue, right? Okay. So if that's the case, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete the cabinet legs out of the dialog, and I'm just going to freeform place those. 
So let's just delete these. So let's come in here to the accessories. Let's come in and we'll want to say none. Okay, so that's gonna get rid of it. We'll come back over to the toe kick and we'll get rid of the toe kick completely. And then I'm going to take the floor to bottom and say it's six inches or whatever it is. So that means it's gonna take the cabinet six inches off of the top. Let's see if we did that right. Yep, and actually I need to shrink that down because I got rid of the toe kick. So minus six, 28 inches, okay. All right, so you see how I have no legs there? And right. you only want legs in the front. Right, to support the front of the cabinet. Yep. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna freeform place those. And if I come down and find the foot that I want, let's go into the plan view. Where is this? Yeah, here we are. I'm gonna grab the foot. I'm gonna place it. Let's just verify that this is the right size. Should be six, it's eight inches. So let's let's just make this easy since I've already done this. Let's make that eight inches. And then the height of it is 26. Okay. So now let's figure out where we want the leg. Let's pull it in there. Let's open up our elevation view. So it'll be easier to do. And then I'm gonna grab that leg. You can use the copy reflect or we'll just slide a copy of it over there maybe center it on the bank of drawers. And let's try that one more time. Ah, there we go. And then let's see what that looks like in our 3D view. I pulled it too far back. So a little bit of work, find that guy whatever reason, the view I was in. And then I only have two legs in the front. Gotcha. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. A little extra work, but if you wanna be very specific, if you want three legs in the front, four legs in the front, just manually place them and then use sure. your transform replicate and you can be very exact about positioning those. Sure. Thank you, appreciate you it. Yep, thanks Martin. Matt, we have a question from Joanne Hurd. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Hey, Joanne. Um, I'm wondering if there's any way to generate an ele a wall elevation showing the wall thicknesses on each side as well that would also, you know, pick up um, your adjacent uh, sections of a window, the projection of a windowsill, um or door headers and things like that without doing a cross section hmm. which which shows like a ceiling joists and floor joists and things like that okay so let's see here this room that i have open should be a shed ceiling let's just verify yeah that's a wall elevation okay so this is a shed ceiling but the wall elevation view isn't going to show you anything above the perceived wall top, which is a nine foot ceiling. And if we were to look inside of this room with our camera, this is a shed ceiling, right? Is that right? Yeah, there's a shed ceiling. So you want to see the wall thickness perhaps of this side wall over here? Yeah, if I'm showing the, you know, a, if I've got a door or a windowsill that projects into the space, mm -hmm. and I'm showing the face of a cabinet, and I want to show that relationship, the, so the the front elevation is showing the face of the vanity, and I've got okay. the countertop and like that, but I want to show the section of the thickness of the wall and the section of the window, so that I can illustrate the relationship between those heights. Okay, so you, you're you gonna need to use your section tool and yeah. then you can, you can crop in on it. And if we take our section view camera and let's just do this and see what it looks like and see how different it is. 
So in this case, this is not the wall elevation. Actually, that's difficult to see. Let's do it on the other wall. So here's the wall elevation showing this one. And maybe this is what you're after here. You see how I have the wall thicknesses here? I do. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't dimension it, but it could be easily done by just taking this and pulling the dimension out like that. Yeah. Now, would that show the section of a window or a, so, a door? So there's the, so um, there's the window. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, now, now the difference okay. is if if you just use the wall elevation camera. Let's right. see if we can do that. It looks. It just looks different because. It chops it off at the perceived height. Let's just cut a wall elevation through here. Right. And it's only of the room. So in this case, you're not seeing that shed ceiling, right? And you're not seeing your walls. So when you use the section camera, right, you cut a section through here. It's going to show you also the shower room and the ceiling. And if we yeah. just compare the two views, so here's the default that you got. Here's the one that I've cleaned up a little bit. Oh, well, how did you lose the the floor joists? <laughs> they were there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good question. So here they are, right? Right. So I've got some, I, I have some interior wall elevations. And then if I do want to show the relationship between a, a window on a perpendicular wall, I, I can't do it without the header, the, 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 the floor or ceiling joists showing up. So they look odd together, <laughs> you know? I mean, and so you just did it without, so how did you do it on that lower left? Yeah, let's pull this down so that it's a little easier to see. <laughs> here's, what, here's what I've done. So down here in the bottom, you see the, the joist and you said up here in this one, you don't see the joist, right? Well, here's my secret. I use digital whiteout. Um, some of these are layers. Um, if you come over here into the layer thing and we look for joist, let's see if what we find. You know, those layers aren't even there, but it's showing the platform. So it's cutting the platform of not only the joist, but also the wall. So it's showing you the cavity of it. So there's there's a couple ways you can do it. One, do you, do you ever care about the floor, Joanne? No. no. You never care about the floor. So here's the easiest thing to do. Well, first of all, the way I did it, I used what I call digital whiteout. This is a CAD box that just has white fill. Oh. Can you still, but, but you still have your dimension lines. Yeah, okay, but so, all right. But the easiest way really to do this if we do, let's do a new plan and let's make this big. Okay, so if I draw four walls and we take a, let's go ahead, make these gable walls. So we see, okay. And we take a section view through here. You're gonna see the floor platform, okay? you're gonna see this floor platform. Yeah. So if you don't care about ever having a floor platform, set your default so that you don't have a floor. So in your template plan, we could open up this room, and I'll just show you on one room. We can come into the structure panel, right? And right now it's saying the floor structure is 14 and some change inches. Uh-huh. Get rid of it. So let's um, go in, click at it. And I'm going to delete, delete, okay, it's gone. We go back into that section view, uh, wrong one, where are we at? Untitled, run a section through here. You're not going to see a floor platform at all, it's yes. gone. Okay, excellent, excellent. So just open up your template plan, okay? And underneath of your defaults, go into your rooms. Yeah. So that will be underneath of your floors and rooms. Mm -hmm. Come into your floor and ceiling platform. Mm -hmm. And really, I did that on one room, but just come into your edit tool 
and just delete both of those items if they happen to be in there, that will then be your default. And then every time you draw four walls in a room, you won't get that platform thickness down below there. And you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and I and can I do similarly with um, eliminating uh, visually the ceiling choice? Um, if you, well, um, maybe. Yeah, okay. I'd have to take a look at that, but maybe. Yeah. You might be able to change the structure on your roof that says basically there is really not much of a roof because you're only after the roof to generate your ceiling, right? Yes. So I don't see any reason why that also wouldn't work. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll play with that. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. Good question. Hey, Scott. We have a question from Norman James. Hi, Norman. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Morning, Scott. Hey, Norman. How are you? Very well. And yourself? It's afternoon here, by the way. Yeah, no, it's still morning here. And I'm, if I'm doing a cabinet, so a lot of the styles that we sing now is the top edge of a draw front has got a bevel to create like a finger pull. And okay. then what what they do is put a like a aluminum section into the base cabinet. Okay. To create to create a space for the handle. So you have no hardware on the handle. Okay. The best way if I wanted to make that accurate, would that be to create a cabinet and then make my draw just using a, a poly line so you'd have like a draw opening. Can you go through that maybe? I think we should have a door style in there and maybe it's not quite what you're after. Let's go into the library and see if I can find that door drawer style. Sorry. Let's see if I have that in the regular core catalog. Should be under architectural cabinet doors and drawer panels. Mm. That's an integrated front. Let's see if we can find that. Is that, uh, uh, of course, I'll remove the handle off. Is that what you're after? Okay, they they do that. Um, that that kind of what they did, but what what they tend to do now is the actual draw front itself. The top edge of the draw has got a. 45 degree bevel cut back on it. Okay. And so then let's um, see if I can find it. And I think I need to put a blank area so you can see this on the cabinet. Let's just make that a blank area. Is that what you're after? That's exactly that. what we're the vector view. Is that what you're after right there? Something like that? Yes, that's exactly because what I did previously is I basically made the draw as a blank area and then created a poly solid. So how mm -hmm. how did you how did you find that? So basically you can create your own doors and drawers in the program. Um, you know, you can use a polyline solid, you can draw out a six inch by twenty-four inch slab, right? Half inch thick or whatever. And then you're going to take the back edge of this profile and just pull it back at a 45 degree angle, convert to a symbol, and then make sure you do your advanced options. And then it will come in as a cabinet door or drawer. And that's one way you can do it. We have a ton of um, cabinet doors and drawers in the program. Our staff actually uses, because they do it a lot, they use 3D Studio to create it. But if you're going to create something like that, and just take an elevation view. What you're gonna end up doing is you can just use a polyline solid and I'm just gonna kind of roughly come in here and create a solid and we'll make it 24 by six, okay? And then we'll set yep. it to be half inch thick or whatever it is, half inch, right? And then yep. you're gonna wanna take a section view of the other side so that we can, let's pull this out away from the wall here. And let's just do a section view of that. 
right? And then you're gonna pull that back to whatever the reveal is. And then from a 3D view, if I have one up, where are we at? Click on it, go to your tools, symbol, convert to a symbol, selected object. And here's where it's kind of important. Make sure you select it's a cabinet door and door and show the advanced options. Right. And from that point, of course, give it a good name. And then I think it's under the options panel. Treat it as a drawer front, super important. Then it shows up. Of course, this is an ugly looking concrete door and you can spray it in there and a, that's how you do it. Now, if I, I see on that drawer front, it's actually beveled. Yeah, I drew it, I drew it inverted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I drew it inverted, so I'd have to reverse that and shape it the other way. Super easy to do from that profile view, right? You just pull that down the other way like this yep. and then do the same step. Okay, cool. Does that work? That's awesome. That's exactly, it just saves me making basically slabs for every draw front and modifying it. Mm -hmm. And then from, from there, I can basically just put, so... Typically, if you look in the top right-hand corner of that drawer front, there's, you can see that the a gap into the cabinet. Yeah. So what what our what our people are doing now, or, or there's an aluminium section that they run inside the cabinet, so you can't see into that, but it just oh. gives quite a nice powder coated detail. Nice, nice. All right. Thanks so much, Scott. Okay. Have a good morning. You too. Scott, we have a question from Cynthia Walden. Hi, Cynthia. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Um, I Hi, Cynthia. was working on a project where I was recessing a um, tall cabinet into a wall. Okay. So at first, I just used the command key and pushed it into the wall, and the face would be proud of the yeah. wall. Right. Um, and it wasn't showing up in the wall elevation, it would in the cross section. And then I tried building a doorway that was the same size and opening and it was the same thing. It still didn't show up and I was just wondering why. Hmm, let me see if I have an example of something like that that I could open up. Let me close this last. You just take what you have and push it through the wall. <laughs> Let's see. But, uh... Okay, so I have a situation here, if you can see in my plan view, mm -hmm. where I've got the cabinet front, it's jammed through the back of the room, right? right? And let's see if we can repeat what you're trying to do here. Let's just make sure that I have this and understand what you're after. So I've jammed that cabinet into the back of the wall. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the side of it, the side of it's right here. Right. So if I take a wall elevation, this is the mud room. Right. Should I be able? To, are you saying that you wouldn't be able to see that when you take so a wall I, elevation? Yeah, the wall elevation re, um, view, which you taught me that trick for creating all the wall elevations, which I love, but it didn't work for that wall because I had this recessed cabinet and I had to do a separate, I had to do a cross section um, and trim that. So see if it works for you. Okay, yeah, let's try it. Let's just take a wall elevation because I don't know if it will. So let's make sure we're, where we're at back here. Let's grab our wall elevation tool, shoot a wall elevation, see if we see the one cabinet. And we don't, because that cabinet exists in the other room, it's not showing it for whatever reason. But I have Let's, it, but I did, I did mine different. My cabinet was built in the same room that the wall elevation was taking, was in, but it's still- Okay. So, okay. Okay. So you're saying that um well this plan's fine let's just jam a cabinet, just in, here. A cabinet in your master closet and push it into the wall and you're saying you did something like this you did that and then take the elevation from the master closet and you don't see it nope but you do for the cross section yeah and i'm guessing because since that cabinet is predominantly in the other room that it's not showing because of the, the limitation of the wall elevation. It'd be the same thing if I 
took an elevation and wanted to see past the wall. And yeah. you do apparently have to use a tool that would be able to see past the wall to be able to get to that. Yeah. Al, do you, do you want to maybe add add anything to that? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try making the cabinet an inch uh, deep. Keep it in the room. Keep the cabinet in the room, make it an inch deep. Okay, so you're saying take the cabinet, make it one inch deep. But I want it, but I, for the floor yeah, plan, I need yeah, to not with, yeah. Yeah. Right, but okay, that, that, that will show it in the view let's go back into our floor plan view i think the issue then in this case oh boy where'd i go let me close a couple of these things i think the issue is you want to see it in the floor plan is that right you want to see the depth yeah they want to see the depth in the floor plan and you want to see the face in the wall i mean i'm, I'm okay i can do the cross section as mm -hmm. al knows i i have had struggles with things but knowing that you can't do that you can't do it in the wall elevation makes me feel better yeah now we we i don't know if you heard earlier the question came up about a u-shaped cabinet what you could do so this is a wall elevation right one inch thick cabinet and if you go back into that floor plan view where are we at boy close a couple of these things I mean, you could just use that same box tool, yeah, and fake it, right? I, yeah, I, I mean, I think just using the cross section, but that, I like this last solution about using the box tool. That's something that would work. Yeah, and then you could fill it if you wanted the same fill style, and then you could use the wall elevation, and you don't have to necessarily clean up the view, right? By doing other things, so that that might be one way to do it too. Okay, I like that. Thank you. Thanks for calling in, Cynthia. Scott, Robin Stewart had a question. Go ahead, Robin. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah. super, super quick question. Um, oftentimes, well, I use a custom cabinet maker for my cabinets, so I'll use a custom vanity. Um, so say it's a 60 inch vanity, 24 inch uh, sink base, 12 inch drawer base, 24 inch sink base. How do I center the sinks on that when I make a custom vanity? Because it does not give me the option in Chief Architect to center on the 24 section of each side of the vanity. So Robin, if I understand your question, let me just grab that um, other plan here. You have two sinks in the same vanity. Is that what the situation is? Yes. If you're doing a, like for an owner's bathroom, um, and you have a double bowl uh, sink base, which is very, very common, um, 60 inches or 72 inches. Like, uh, for example, if you wanted to center that sink base on the left-hand side of your two drawer base, Chief Architect mm -hmm. refuses to center on a section or mm. refuses to center. So, and you know, doing an owner's bathroom is like every single one of our projects and centering a sink base is a problem in every single one of my drawings. So I just need a way to do this. What I've been doing is in an elevation, I've been drawing a CAD line and trying to center mm -hmm. on the CAD line. That and works. I, but I have to center like the sink base on that cab line. Then I have to center the faucet on that cab line. Then I have to center the mirror on that cab line. And so I'm constantly selecting and trying to center things on that cab line. And it's it's impossible. It's it's an egregious amount of work to get that to work correctly. So what I like to do is use the crosshairs mm -hmm. to center it. And you're gonna be more accurate probably with using a cab line. Okay, so there's sink number one. Since I already have that, I'm gonna take this sink number one, copy, but why reflect can't, the balance. Why can't I just center it on that drawer face? Why okay. is that a problem? Well, hopefully some of our engineers here are uh, are listening and, and I'll make sure that we capture that. Um, and, and I just don't have the tool that I can center it on the other one. Yeah, and, and you're right. I mean, basically drawing a CAD line is probably the easiest thing to do. 
the cat line doesn't always center correctly and there's not a real great way to center the cat line correctly like I, you can throw it on that cabinet and like i would say i would say eight times out of ten you know you'll get that cat line that will throw correctly on that drawer face or the face where you need it center but then when you're doing what was just suggested where things are like offset because i have to modify a face frame for inset then that cad line won't throw to the center of that cabinet so for example like if my you're doing inset and your face frame is one and a half inches on one side but you modify that face frame to be three quarters of an inches to the other side to marry to three quarters of an inches to the next cabinet then it won't throw that cad line centered it'll throw that that cad line will be three eighths of an inch off every single time okay. and then i can't center the sink yeah i i think you're asking for a feature we just don't have um but, but, that's but it sounds like a good one who doesn't use this dt who doesn't I, use this first of all i i totally agree with what you're asking for i just don't have the feature today and um that's a great request I mean, that's one of the reasons why we ask the engineers to <laughs> listen in on these events, because sometimes we don't have the right tools for the designers. And I think what you're asking for is, you know, makes a lot of sense with something we should add. So do you see my screen? I here? do. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I could, I could go through the detail of getting this exactly centered, right? By drawing some CAD lines in here yeah. yeah and and you know how to set those cad lines right to whatever yeah. the dimensions yeah, are I do. yeah 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 and you know how to change those to be center lines so if that's going to go to the center line of this fixture we could change that to a center line and then we can pull that yeah. up into well, show me that one more time because i did not know how to change it to a center line and so i can change sometimes the cad line but then i have to try to center the fixture because you can see in your drawing right now the sink isn't centered on that cad line no, but and, I can't center it, right? But, but but you don't know if that cad line, so you look where that drawer, what the width of that drawer face is, and then divide it by two, like you have to figure out if that's actually centered, and it's not. I mean, you could see it right now. The right-hand side, on my view, is narrower than the left-hand side, so that cad line isn't centered. So let's make sure we center this line. So let's pull it over. And by the way, one of the things that, um, what was your name again? my name's robin i wrote that down too uh so robin one of the things we're doing in in the future um is we're going to allow dimensioning to go to face items and um where is that right yeah because that's the problem is the dimensioning goes to the the um the face frame so when you have two face frames married together you have three quarters inch and three quarters of an inch versus one and a half like on a left so it won't it's always like three eighths of an inch off right so you see this diagram that i have open here yes i've dimensioned to the face items so so it, it's not a guarantee but i've seen this feature working and i've been able to generate these types of dimensions cool and beans. so running running the dimension line if we grab this um this cad line and we center it basically right on that drawer right i centered it right on that drawer so it turns out it's 13 and 1 16 i'm okay. going to grab the, the sink and the faucet i'm going to use that cad line pick up the center line of it it's exactly centered yeah and now that's what i can do it's just not it's not super helpful on inset so like and sure. so and, well, and if that's this fine. cabinet were inset let's switch it over to inset okay so it'll look a little different so i'm going to center that based on that center line let's just pull that over so we know that it's exactly centered i'm going to pick up the snap on there so it's 13 and a quarter now yeah and what i've done here if you zoom in on that box i drew a line edge to edge on the drawer and what i did is i drew a perpendicular line and let's just pull it off to the side. Then I took that perpendicular line and I picked up the snap point of that line. Yep. Center point. And then I can make sure the sink and the faucet are centered on that. 
then I can turn this layer off if I don't want to see that line, right? Because it's distracting my drawing. Sure, sure, sure. But I can tell you that I have seen face item dimensions, so you don't have to draw these crazy CAD lines. But being able, I think the other thing you're asking for is, gosh, it'd sure be nice to be able to center an object like a sink on a bank of drawers. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to worry about like offsetting things because of face frame dimensions between right. cabinets. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, good yeah. enough. I'm all set. Thank but you. The other tool, I don't know if you notice, you know, if if you have two CAD lines, you could use center between two points, but you still have to draw the initial lines to do it. Yes. Yeah. Center yeah. between two points is another tool that you can use. All right. Well, I'm super thankful. Thank you for that. Robin, thanks for your question. A good one. Yeah. Carrie, was it was there one more question? I think we have time for one more here. Let me check. Make sure it's an easy one though. <laughs> Uh, we have Dove Brown. Hi, Dove. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. How are you? Hi, Dove. Um, I noticed in one of your bathrooms that you've got a, it looks like a Kohler Videra mirror mm -hmm. or medicine yeah. cabinet. Whatever you've used to create that mirror, um, it really does reflect. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it does. Yeah, um, the one in the full bathroom. Yeah, let's go back in. I'm going to open up. Where was that? Let's yeah. take a quick view. Um, so one of the things you can do is you can turn mirror reflections on and off. And if I take a 3D view here, oh, um, I have mirror reflections turned on. Sometimes I turn them off because they are expensive. And if I'm just doing basic editing, I don't like to have them on. You'll find that setting to turn them on and off underneath your edit active view and you'll find this in the camera setting reflection so if I turn it off little check mark here turn it off you can see that you know now it okay isn't reflecting but this is a nice option because again mirrors are expensive on your computer not that this is a very big drawing but if you had a whole house and lots of mirrors it can be expensive because it's reflecting the entire scene and heaven forbid you have a mirror across from another mirror but that setting is just in your edit active view you can turn on the reflections and that's how you get the mirrors okay wonderful great thank you so thanks. much thanks dove well i wanted to thank everybody for coming to the session today remember our different resources we have. We're doing these free webinars on Thursdays. Next week, we're gonna be doing about showers and tiles. And then we're also doing virtual training seminars. We have one that starts the first part of September. We're doing kitchen and bath, we're doing an intro, and then we're doing an intermediate class. Those are starting to fill up. If you're interested in signing up for those, then I would encourage you to do that. Those are four days, four hours each day and it's across two different weeks. So it's a great way to learn. Our on-demand classes, same type of content, but you basically can consume those yourself. There's no sports on TV so or limited sports on TV, so it's a great way to consume your weekend. And then the one-on-one -on -one training, if you are interested in using screen sharing and a specific project you have, we're doing those with certified chief architect trainers it's a great resource and it's all about your project and helping you be successful we have video playlists i did talk about having in the cabinet basics if you wanted to learn more about that video we have an entire system of videos if you go to our user center come down to training videos you can see a lot of different videos one of the things we've been doing are recording, if we scroll down a little bit, we've been recording our live stream sessions. And then you can see these at your convenience. And um, anyways, our videos up there are really helpful if you wanna take advantage of those. How-to articles, the equivalent of the video, but in written form. And then Chief Talk is a great resource with others like you sharing information and answering questions. Great resource, a lot of people working at home using those things. Next week, I hope you'll join us. We're gonna be talking about showers, some basic design dimensioning and some tile details. 
that will be next Thursday, same time, same place, Thursday, August 20th at noon Pacific time. And uh, hope to see you there soon. If you want to use the Chief Challenge file, you can download this from the Chief Talk user forum. You can follow the steps, you can watch the video. Great way to reinforce any of the learning that we may have went through here on the seminar today. Thanks a lot, everybody, and have a great day.